So today we're going to be jamming with Jamin, Jamin Davis. We're going to keep going with the linebackers. I don't know why this intro was so hard, but maybe because we have a very interesting prospect here. I believe this will be the last one for the linebackers, at least for now it will be, um, unless we get any you know suggestions. But um, we got an interesting one here. So how are you doing, Mike? I'm doing well. We most certainly do. No question. Jamin, uh, a player who I had not really heard much about until just recently, you know, I kind of went through it and picked out a list of the 10, 12 linebackers that we were going to potentially do back in early March. And Jamin was not in that discussion. Something's happened in the last month to make him fly up boards. Right. And uh, that's just his pro day pretty much. Right. He ran a a little bit of some debate upon the number at his 40, anywhere between a 437, a 441, and a 449. Regardless, really freaking fast. And then you look at the other numbers, 42-inch vertical, 11-foot broad jump. I believe those are the two highest that we've seen to this point, as well as a 21, uh, 21 reps on bench at 225. So very freakishly athletic. I feel like those numbers make everybody want to go back and rewatch the film. And when you put on the film, I think that, you know, we kind of saw stuff that we weren't very much so expecting. We'll obviously get into that in a second, but I did want to ask Mike uh, just real quick a question. The sample size, right? There seems to be a lot of concern around uh, Jamin having only really had that final junior season as a highly productive uh, full-time starter. What are your thoughts on that, right? Um, is it too is it too naive to say, oh, one good year like that and now he's the first, second-round guy? Or do you think that's sort of that par for the course year-to-year uh, improvement that we're actually looking for in prospects what are your thoughts there uh i like the improvement and i guess if you're using that kind of argument or are people are i'm not saying you are but if people are then like how is michael parsons any better or, or plenty of prospects we've looked here um you know there's not very many like dylan moses who was you know productive with that alabama defense you know since his freshman year that's just not the case for most individuals so i think he's on a normal course there's nothing that really sticks out there's nothing that's making me boost boost his grade, to, you know, based off of his production or his time there at Kentucky. And there's nothing that's really, um, you know, negating it. Like, I, I think that's a very normal trajectory. And I think he was really productive with, um, the, with the time he had. Yeah. And as we kind of get into the skill set that he does have, I mean, I would 100% wager that if he returned to Kentucky for another year, he would duplicate that season, if not improve upon those numbers. So, you know, where some of those other prospects, you might have already seen that second productive year uh, with him and his traits. It's hard to expect that he would do anything otherwise. So as we get into the grade, you're going to see, I think that uh, at least myself, speaking for myself, I'm significantly higher on Jamin Davis than most might be. I felt like in terms of his range, sideline to sideline, uh, man, this guy could do it all, right? I didn't quite have him as high as, as Micah and Owusu, but um, pretty dang close at that 13.75. I also thought he was very impressive in coverage, right? Kind of a, a best of both in that regard, uh, whereas we saw, you know, that wasn't really Micah's strength. It was Owusu's, whereas, you know, say Micah was better in the box. Owusu, we didn't really get to see him do much of that. I think Jamin's a good sort of balance between the both of them, right? Uh, looked very comfortable uh, in coverage in terms of flipping his hips and running with guys, as well as uh, just playing zone coverage in, in terms of uh, keeping an eye on the QB, watching who's entering and exiting his zones. Did a very good job there, as well as when he was filling in the box. And, you know, one thing that I wanted to mention with the block shedding grade is there's certainly an argument that it should be higher. I only gave him a 10 out of 15 because I don't know if the way he's shedding blocks is super sustainable, right? A lot of it is... Uh, highly finesse based, right? Kind of like Micah Parsons in what we saw, but uh, man, he is active with his hands, right? He is not content being blocked by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, you could almost argue that he deserves the highest block shedding grade of anybody just because of how uh, high of a motor, I would say in that regard, he has in terms of uh, always constantly hand fighting and, and beating bigger and stronger offensive linemen with that. So uh, you could argue higher than a 10. I'm just not sure if that's going to work at the next level when, you continue to get bigger and stronger guys than he even saw in college at Kentucky. Otherwise his awareness and IQ, this was the probably most surprising trait about his film in my eyes. You know, you look at somebody who's oh, a combine freak, a late riser, uh, a raw prospect in a lot of people's eyes. And I was expecting somebody who uh, kind of had a Nick Bolton like play style, right? Maybe a Cameron McGrone where you can see some athletic traits, but you don't see him put them into practice. That couldn't be further from the truth uh, with Jamin. He did a fantastic job of almost instantly on uh, the vast majority, if not all plays, 
maintaining his gap integrity right and as soon as he recognizes that play is going to the right and my gap is moving he's moving laterally with it there's no wasted movement uh, in that regard whereas you know you look at some of the other guys that we've done Bolton Zavin Collins they're taking these massive uh, sort of hopping steps forward towards the line of scrimmage read steps that you know a lot of coaches teach nowadays well you know, when the QB pulls that ball back in play action, the read step just became a, an out of position step, right? Because now you're two steps in further when you need to be aborting and getting back in pass coverage. Jamin doesn't have those problems, right? He does a great job of, uh, instead of getting his eyes lost in the backfield at what's going on there, he's reading his keys at the line of scrimmage. And I thought he did a fantastic job at that. I actually gave him the highest IQ and awareness grade of anybody that we've watched. Uh, due to that in terms of his quickness and change of direction man quick like some of the best we've seen in the class but when it comes to changing directions I did think uh, there were some sort of hitches in, in terms of uh, maybe taking a little bit longer to plant and go than other guys that we've seen at the top of the class say uh, Owusu right obviously I gave him a 10 out of 10 there I don't think that Jamin is quite that fluid and, and that um that good at just stopping on a dime and changing directions. But when you're doing such a good job with that initial uh, first couple steps, reading your keys, you oftentimes don't have to change direction, right? You're kind of on that straight path towards the play. And he does a very good job there in terms of finishing and tackling. You know, he had over hundred tackles last year. I would say he probably could have had uh, 20 more, right? There were quite a few plays where he was just around the ball and uh, maybe I don't even want to say I didn't get it done because he was so often getting, getting it done, but I still think there was room to improve and get even better. Um, there and then like I said motor very high motor as well as fantastic size and uh, five out of five athleticism I don't know what to do with a guy who's a Russell Westbrook like vertical jump right I don't know what the heck to do with that besides give him a five out of five so Mike 81.75 on Jamin Uh, obviously a first round grade and one of the top three linebackers in the class for me where are you at with your grade it's hard for me. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And I already kind of said, you know, when we did, a, I, I think he's in the conversation with Owosu and, and Micah Parsons. I, I think I was pleasantly surprised, but I think the film is more comparable to what we saw with those two. And I, I think, um, I think both Owosu and Parsons, maybe not, you know, in combine or pro day numbers, but at least off, you know, game speed, I think both of them played a little bit quicker, Parsons and, and Owosu. Um, but our boy Jam and Jamin was just a step behind and not much. And I, and where he maybe lacked him a little bit of that, just game speed and playing with that, that quickness, I think he made up because he was by far the most physical, you know, the physicality you definitely saw on film compared to the other two. I think he's right there with, with, with them. I think Owusu and Jamin, I, I'm not going to lie. I think they might be my one and two best linebackers in this class. I think I might be taking a little, See that on Michael Parsons, just from what I saw here, I, I think he offers kind of my, my, my take on Michael was he offers that versatility playing the Mike linebacker. But I just think some of what I saw from Javen, the physicality, I think the IQ awareness, you know, not, not taking that read step, just kind of being aware of what was going on in front of him and making the play. Um, I think Wosu and Parsons maybe made a little bit more plays in the backfield, but I don't know. I just think Javen is just a probably my, the most well-rounded out of all three of them. I, I think the other two might ex- excel in certain areas, but just as an overall player, I'm not going to lie. I really liked what I saw and those pro day numbers really just kind of backed that up for me. So I, I don't, I don't know if I, it's kind of a hard one. Would I go out and, and draft Davis over the other two? It's a real head scratcher for me, to be honest. And Wosu, I think in certain situations, depending on what you're looking for, probably not, but Parsons versus Davis, if you're looking for that, you know, just traditional off ball, you know, if you're looking for a Mike linebacker, who am I taking? I'd have a lot of time thinking about it. I think the grade, it's it's a 1A, 1B situation for me. You know, and it's very interesting uh, to say the least because even though I'm maybe not as high on him as you are, if you're a team, say Detroit at seven, right, who uh, Mike and I speculate may be in the Micah Parsons market, uh, if you could trade back to the 20s and get a guy like Jamin, it's no question, a no-brainer. You know, you could create value potentially with him. You look at where he's ranked elsewhere. PFF has him 85, CBS Sports 48. I will take that all day. If I could get him at 30, I would be excited. I would be enamored, right? Because I think he's right there in that discussion. I mean, I have him just below Aziz and Quiddy Pay. Um, you know, when you add in the position premium and whatnot. But I think that you know, like you said, he's a very well-rounded prospect. 
uh, in terms of he steals sort of the best parts of both Owusu's and Micah's game. And I think that he puts them together in a very complete picture, despite only having played really that one full uh, complete productive season. Right. And that's why I thought it was so interesting because, you know, you look at that awareness and that IQ and most oftentimes we think that that comes with game reps, right? Oh, you need to be a four-year starter or a three-year starter. Well, you know, he was doing it in his first real year there. And that has me potentially even more intrigued because, you know, you see the physique, you see the athleticism. I don't know if the sky is not the limit with Jamin, right? He very easily, in my eyes, could develop into uh, the best linebacker in this class, right? And, you know, maybe it doesn't look like it considering how, uh, you know, how much room there is between him and Micah, but that's only two points uh, on, on the overall grading scale, right? And I think that there is just a lot of potential with Jamin as long as you uh, put him in a role where he can do what he does best. And, you know, if you're a team, don't draft him to be a three, four outside linebacker or something dumb like that. Don't draft him to be a, a Sam linebacker or something where he might have a minimized role, right? I would say put him at middle where he can show off that uh, flashy awareness and play recognition and ability to just read his keys and react accordingly and, and let him take charge of your defense, honestly. Um, that's kind of where I fall on him. I, I think that if you're looking for somebody as a will, I'd go probably a Wusu. If you're looking for somebody to maybe play all three and offer some more value at the line of scrimmage, I'd maybe go Micah. But man, if you're just looking for a straight Mike linebacker, it for me would be tough to take those guys as well ahead of, uh, ahead of Jamin. And I did want to bring up Mike, a lot of people, they, their top threes are kind of uh, cemented in, right? They have Zavin Collins in there. You, you're taking Jamin over Zavin. What's the kind of comparison there? I know different players, but how so, I guess, in your eyes? Absolutely. I think with Zavin, you know, you know we're kind of lacking maybe just at least kind of, as I said, for, for Davis, the, the play speed. I think Zavin is a step or two, probably more than two steps below that, um, where Zavin's a little bit more physical of a linebacker. So you definitely see that physicality, but I don't think it's two steps below. I think it's actually relatively close. And obviously the size is there for Zavin, but um, I think Davis played really physical for his size. And I think it works. And especially if you, you know, have a pretty decent defensive line in front of you. Um, I, I think, you know, kind of having that extra IQ and awareness, that athleticism, I think will, will speak volumes. And I think it makes up for maybe some of that just pure strength he might be giving up compared to Zavin. So um, no, I, I think at least for me, he's definitely my, my linebacker three. And I don't think there's a ton of conversations um, if you're maybe looking kind of, as we talked about for Zavin, if you're looking for that three, four outside linebacker, kind of like Anthony Barr type player, then yeah, Zavin probably fits your mold a little bit better there. But, um, just from purely what I saw, you know, technique, how, you know, far ahead in the process are they? I think just for having one full year, Davis looked like he's a plug and play come day one and, and can make some plays for your defense. So, um, Zavin still has a little bit of you know, room for improvement. And I, and I think just he's a little, just Davis a little bit further ahead. So. No, and it's interesting because, you know, we're kind of talking about how people have those questions about Davis's sample size. Well, it's not like the other three top linebackers are devoid of questions as well. Right. You know, you look at Micah and we didn't take it into account, but you have the potential character concerns, right. With the whole hazing deal, you have the fact that he wasn't opt out, right. What has he done in the past year? How has he trended with Owusu, right. We saw Notre Dame using him in that absolutely bogus role as a nickel cornerback for 50% of the snaps, right? How is he going to play in the box on a play and play out base if you draft him as a will linebacker? With Zavin, I, I don't know if there's as many questions necessarily. To me, it's just more so where does he fit your scheme as well as he did play at Tulsa, mind you. You know, we're not talking about necessarily, you know, playing the Alabamas on a week in, week out basis. So could he have just been flashing and racking up those counting stats going up against some inferior competition? Whereas Jamin here kind of has, again, the best of both. Yeah, there's small sample size concerns. Um, but I think that as you put on the film, and I'd love to watch even more film because, you know, he had seven of 10 games with double digit tackles, right? And we watched three of them as well as one of them where he didn't. And I thought he was wildly impressive. So I wouldn't necessarily go as far to say that I think he's necessarily straight up better than Parsons, better than Koromoa, but he's dang close. And, you know, especially if you can get him a little bit later, I would most certainly uh, be advocating for that if I was in an NFL uh, front office. So with that being said, Mike, you got anything else? Or are we getting out of here? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, this video, me and Mike had a pretty strong opinion. So if you agree with that opinion or disagree, I think it's absolutely asinine. We have 
our boy Jam and Jamin as the number three linebacker, let us know. We'd love to hear it. Um, if you think there's another linebacker that should be between, you know, in this conversation as well, let us know. We'll do that video next. Who knows? Um, but you know, we've enjoyed doing these, and you know, if you enjoy these as well, subscribe. We're working on getting 100 subscribers. We're almost there. 84. Hopefully, by the time you see this video, we're we're up there, maybe in the 90s. But we're moving. We're hustling. Um, we're excited for this draft. That's for sure. So, anything else with that, Mike? No, I think this is going to be the last of the linebacker videos. I know Mike's going on vacation, so he might be uh, back just to me doing some solo ones. Not entirely sure what position we're going to get next. We do have some requests to knock out, uh, but should be a fun couple of weeks here up into the draft. So I think with that being said, I think we're mic'd up. I thought we're micing out. Peace, guys. Deuces.